Hi everyone and welcome to my Celeste wig video. In this video I'll be showing you how I created my Celestia Lunenburg wig, a project that was completed live on my Twitch channel last year. This is a very lengthy project that I don't recommend undertaking if you're under any sort of time crunch. The end product is also very heavy so if you're not used to wearing heavy wigs, be very careful. My wig ended up being about four and a half pounds, which to me is very light, but it's definitely heavy and should only be worn for short periods of time. All of this footage is taken directly from my Twitch channel. I spent about 100 hours on it, but for someone who's working on it while not streaming, it will probably be quite a bit shorter. This is my first wig of this scale, and my first drill curl wig ever, so I definitely recommend watching this video all the way through before you start your project. There are things you may choose to do differently, and there are also several things that I decided I didn't like through my own personal project. I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope it helps you in all your future wig projects. To start, materials, you will need the following. A wig head that is accurate to your head size. It may need to be padded. A twin tail wig. I use the Arda Chibi wig and recommend it for anyone doing this or a similar project. Long wefts in the same color as your wig. I recommend getting them from the same company as the wig to ensure there isn't any difference in the fibers. If you're trying to use cheaper wigs, you could also butcher some extra wigs for their wefts. T-pins to attach your wig to your wig head. Some hair bands to keep the hair out of the way. Glue. I like to use caulk for my wig styling because it's very strong and I've never had issues with it breaking down. My Tsubaki wig hasn't budged or needed any upkeep, even after four years of cons and not storing or taking care of it properly. I also used some E6000 for the inner supports and some touch-ups. Make sure you get glue that dries clear. Be sure to follow all safety precautions on the glue you use. Tape. Lots of tape. You can use any brand of packing tape, just make sure the one you use sticks to itself well. Wire and wire cutters. I use two kinds of wire in my wig, 14 gauge copper wire and 12 gauge galvanized steel wire. I believe it was around 30 feet of copper wire and I got a 100 foot roll of the galvanized steel for a cheap online. You will also probably need pliers to help bend the wire. You will also need scissors. And some wig clips that you don't care about. They will end up covered in glue. Brushes for glue. It's not required, but highly recommended. Duct tape for inner supports. Nylon webbing for inner supports. It may seem odd, but it will make sense later. A wig brush. A hair cutter. This isn't required, but it will make your cuts much nicer than scissors would, so I definitely recommend it. You can also get hair cutting scissors, but I didn't buy these until after this project, so it's definitely not necessary. I also used a bit of foil and black paint in parts of the wig. You might find other supplies not listed here helpful in your project, but this is everything I used. Now, part one, the wig base. In this section, the main wig structure will be set up. You can see here that my wig head is larger, it is padded. This is because my head is larger than the base wig head. If your head is larger, you might need to pad your wig head. To begin your wig, you will want to take your pigtail wig and place it on a wig head. The reason for using a special pigtail wig is it has a skin top down the middle, which will provide you with a nice part for when your hair is put up in the curls. For Celeste, her curls are higher up on her head, not quite down right on the side like how this wig started. So in order to fix that, we will have to take these base tails out and move them up. Figure out where you would like your curls to start. If you're doing a character other than Celeste, your start spot might be lower down, or higher up, or even on the back of the wig. Now you will take your wire and poke it through one side of the wig head, where you want the curl to start on that side. Then you will want to remove your wig from the wig head so that you can continue running the wire out the other side. This is so you can make sure the wire is going through the exact same spot on both sides of the wig. 
It's harder to see if you keep it on the head, whereas if you have it on your table and can look at the inside, you can count the wefts and see exactly where it is. You might also find it helpful to take a measuring tape and actually measure from the center and the sides to check that it is perfectly matching on both sides. Once you have the wire poking out both sides of the wig, you will proceed to pull the wire through until the halfway mark is lined up with the center of the wig. You can mark this point on the wire before putting it in the wig, or just line up the two sides of the wire to check them. Now you will move the wig back to the wig head. The wig will be on the wig head for the rest of the process, so make sure you pin it down very well. I recommend using T-pins for it. In this, I used ball-headed pins just because I couldn't find my T-pins. Again, you want to use either a padded wig head or just stretch the wig to the size it would be stretched when it's on your head. This is because you are going to glue the hair down later, and if you glue it too tight, you won't be able to stretch the wig to fit on your head. Now you will start adjusting the wire to make the base of the curls. For Celeste, when viewed from the front, her curls curl outward toward the front. From the back, the left side curls counterclockwise and the right side curls clockwise. For different characters, the curls may curl in different directions, so be sure to pay attention to this. The first curl is very important as it will set the size for the rest of the curls. Make sure to take your time and make sure it is the size you want. If you are having trouble with a wire, you may use pliers to bend it. At this point, I realized the pigtails were still in the way. To get them out of the way, I cut the elastics off the base wig, then used other hair ties to tie them into low-hanging pigtails. You want to keep them separate still, so that later you don't have to worry about finding the part again. I then used a third hair tie to tie both of them together while still keeping them separate. You will then continue down the curl, making each individual curl smaller as you go. Keep going back to the previous curls and adjusting them as you need. You don't need to get the curl exactly right the first time, and you might find that you wanted a different size after you do more. I also found it was helpful to use a measuring tape and compare the length of the curls with the length on my body. This way you can use different reference points on your body to see where different curls would sit when the wig is worn. Once you have completed one side, you will want to go to the other side and adjust the curls to match the first side. It can help to take a measuring tape or a ruler to measure the diameter of each curl and match up the corresponding curl on the other side. At this point I had issues with the wire sliding, so I just stitched it to the wig real quick. You will want to make sure the curls on each side match not only in diameter, but also in the height between each one. Once you have the curls where you'd like them, you can start taping them. To do so, you're going to sandwich the wire between two layers of tape, one on top and one on bottom. The sticky side of the tape should be facing each other. 
Don't worry about the width of the tape yet. You will come back later and fix it. It is helpful to cut out strips of tape beforehand. This way you don't have to keep cutting the tape as you're working. Up to this point, you should have left the excess wire on the tip of the curl. Now you will adjust it and then cut off the excess so that you can then tape over it. I'd recommend making this wire just a little bit shorter than what you want the actual length of the curl to be. The end will be covered with tape. Once you have completed one side, you might need to go back over the other side because the length might have been adjusted as you were taping. It's important to make sure the two sides match up at this point, because once you put the tape on, it'll be harder to bend the wire without messing up the angle of the tape that you have placed. Once you're sure that both sides are matching, simply go over the second side the same as you did the first, sandwiching the wire all the way down with tape. Make sure you cut the tip of the second side to the same length as the tip of the first side. Now you will want to go and add more tape to the top curl. The top of each side is wider than one piece of tape, so you will need to add more tape to make sure the curl is wide enough. As you are putting this piece of tape on, you will want to pull it tighter than you pulled the rest of the tape on the curl. This is to ensure that the diameter of the curl the top is less than that of the diameter of the curl in the middle. This is what creates the outside curve on each of Sless curls. Adding those curves is the primary reason for taping the wire once it is already bent. If you're not trying to get a curved look on the outside of the curls, I would recommend instead taping the wire and gluing the hair on while it is still flat and then later curling it into the curl shape. At this point, you may have noticed an issue with a gap forming between the pieces of tape due to the inner tape being smaller. To fix this, just put some vertical cuts on the inside tape to allow it to expand and smooth it down. It's okay if some of the sticky side of the outer tape is exposed. Continue adding tape until you get to the point where a single piece of tape is wide enough. Don't forget to keep pulling the edges tight to help create a curve. Adding hair will also help to create this curve. Add vertical cuts to the inner tape as needed.
here you can see I'm just adding vertical cuts with the scissors, relieving the tension and allowing me to smooth the tape down. Here you can see I cut out strips of tape beforehand and just left them sitting on the edge of my table. Once you're done adding tape, go back over once more to make sure all the inside tape is pressed down firmly. If you didn't tape the tips yet, go back now and add tape to them, making sure that the tape goes a couple of inches past the tip of the wire. Now that you are done taping the wire, it is time to start shaping the tape so that it gets thinner as you go down each side. Measure the top curl and the first curl that has only one layer of tape on it. Make sure that each curl between the two gets steadily smaller. Also make sure the corresponding curls on each side are the same width. It may be helpful to first mark the width with a marker and then go back and cut after. Make sure the wire is at the center of each curl. For the bottoms, first cut the tip into the shape you want for each side. Now, starting from the width of the tips you just cut up to the top curl with only one layer of tape, make the curl smoothly change width. To do this, measure the top curl and the width of the tips. Make each curl between them get steadily smaller as you did for the top half. Then, cut both edges of the tape for the full length of each side. Even on parts that don't need to be changed, cut any stray tape edges. Work slowly and make sure you cut smoothly between each marking you placed earlier. You will now have the base of your wig ready for hair to be glued on. To start gluing hair on your wig, you will need a pack of wefts. Make sure to keep brushing your wefts while you're using them to keep it from getting tangled. Find the end of your pack of wefts and cut off a strip. For this wig, I used 4 inch strips. Every time you remove a strip from the pack of wefts, you will need to brush out the remaining hair to keep it from getting tangled. You will want to start by preparing a bunch of strips of hair ahead of time. This will save you time in the long run as you won't have to constantly stop gluing to cut more hair. 
To start with, I cut a bunch of 4 inch sections out of the pack of lifts. You may want to cut different lengths of sections. Be sure that each section of hair is fully detangled before you start gluing it. I find it helpful to use a clipboard to hold the top of the wefts in place. To glue, you will want to put on gloves, place the hair on some foil, and glue about an inch down from where the hair is bound. Gluing away from the bulky binding is important for later. You will want to remove your gloves when working to detangle each fresh section of hair to avoid getting glue where you don't want it. To glue each section, you will start by applying glue about an inch down from the binding while the hair is flat. Then, fold the hair in half, apply more glue, and fold it again. Be sure the glue is distributed throughout the hair well. The reason for folding the hair like this is to create a thicker section. When it is laid flat, the hair is much thinner and will not cover well, so you fold it to make it thicker. Once the glue has had time to dry, you will want to remove the binding. I used my hair cutter, but if you are just using scissors, be sure the cut is not blunt. The point of this is so that you can seamlessly blend the hair in with the previous section, and a blunt edge like the binding will leave a bump. I normally left this part until I was ready to use the strip of hair, so you don't need to do it ahead of time. Then you will apply glue directly to the tape and glue the hair down. Here you can see I laid the hair down flat. I later figured out that was not the best way to do it, so I do not recommend gluing it down like this. I pinned a piece of foil on each side of the wig to prevent from getting glue on the base wig. I also found it was better to glue the hair on the edges of the tape before gluing it in the center, so I'd recommend doing it in the opposite order of what I did here. To glue the hair, you will place glue down on the tape and then push the hair on top of it. Then you will want to clip it in place. To apply glue, I recommend using brushes, but you can also just use your finger if you'd like. Make sure to put plenty of glue on the tape. When you press the hair against the tape, the glue should be able to move between the fibers. You can rub it as well to make sure the glue is spread throughout. I don't like putting glue on top of the hair if I can avoid it because of the look it gives, but if it doesn't bother you, you can put some glue on top of the hair as well. This stuff does dry clear, but has a different look to it than plain wig fibers. Here you can see me adding another layer to cover that first layer that I didn't like the look of. When you're adding another strip next to one you've already placed, make sure that the edges meet up and there's no gap between them. You might find it helpful to overlap them a bit. If you find you need to add some glue on the top, you can just put a little dab of it and make sure to rub it in and it won't be very visible. Do be careful to not put the clips directly on any large amount of glue. If you do, it might get stuck and when you try to remove the clip you might accidentally mess up some of the work you've done. You might need to brush the strip a little bit as you work. If you do, just make sure to not brush too hard or you might accidentally pull off some of the hair you've already glued. Once you get to the end of your working strip, make sure to leave a few inches not glued down. This will be for later when you need to blend in the next strip. You can see here that I'm gluing the middle part down without having glued the bottom first. I do not recommend doing this. When you're gluing the edges, you will be pulling tight to help create the curved edges that were set up before with the tape. If the center is glued beforehand, it can leave gaps between the bottom and center strips. The hair should always be glued in order from the edge to the center to prevent this.
Again, as you are gluing the edges, you will want to make sure that you pull the hair tight to help create the curved edges on each curl. When working on the bottom of the curls, you might find an issue with the hair sagging off of the curl. To prevent this, make sure to put plenty of clips and put them high enough up that they keep the hair in place. You might also find that it's helpful to put some extra glue just on the bottom hairs. Depending on what kind of wire you're using, you might find that your wig starts sagging at this point. Do not worry about it yet because you will fix that later after you have all the hair glued on the outside. After you have finished the section, go back and do any little cleanups that you need. If you need to, cut off any stray hairs that might get in your way. After you have finished the section on one side, I recommend going to the other side to do that one. This gives the glue time to dry. On this side, you can see I started correctly by doing the edges first, and I already have my strip layered up so that it's not a thin, single weft. Once you have one edge done, you will then go to the other edge and glue that first. Again, make sure you pull these edges tight so that you create the curved edge on the curl. Now you will continue working from the edge inward, alternating between the top and the bottom. When the glue has started to set, you can start removing the clips to use on the rest of the wig.
Here I stuck some duct tape in to see how the wig was going to sit. It won't hold up the wig, so you don't need to bother doing this. Now you will start doing your second section of the wig. To hide the fact that these are two different sections, what you will do is take one of the strips you just prepared, tuck it under the hair you left hanging off earlier, and then glue the hair you left hanging off on top of that strip. I found it helpful to apply the glue directly to the tip of the first section strip. This way you make sure that you don't put too much glue on it. You will then continue this strip exactly the same as you did the first section, making sure to leave the last few inches hanging off. When you're adding these later sections, you'll want to make sure to remove the top of the wefts to prevent bulk and help them fit in seamlessly. Since you already glued the strips together, you can remove the top without worrying about the hairs coming apart. I used a hair cutter that allowed me to get layered edges. If you are using scissors, just make sure to layer the edges. If you leave a blunt cut, there will still be noticeable bulk. You will continue this section exactly how you did the first section. The only difference is how you start the section. I found it helpful to cover the top of the strips with glue after cutting off the top. This allows you to smooth the top down flat before attaching it to the tape. At this point, I realized that the weight of the hair was causing the duct tape I added earlier to pull the tape off the back of the hair at the top. To fix this, I removed the duct tape and added some E6000 glue to hold the tape and hair together. Once the caulk has dried on the hair, it will be one solid piece, so it is simple to make repairs like this if you need to. Here is another view of preparing a strip to be glued on. You will find as you move down the side that you need less strips to cover the tape. If you get to this point before you finish a strip, you will need to cut it shorter so that you are not adding too much hair to the wig. More hair is more weight. To do this, use your cutting tool to layer the end into a tip much like the ends of the strips. If you are using scissors, just make sure not to leave a blunt end. Be very careful not to tug too hard on the hair while doing this as it can pull the hair you glued off before it has a chance to dry. Then you will simply blend the end into the rest of the hair like you're starting a new section. Continue gluing hair in this fashion until you get to the bottom of the curls. Once you get to the bottom of the curl, it will get a little trickier. You will need to shape the hair into the shape you made for the point of the curls. 
In my case, it was a very steep curve, which made it difficult to make the hair perfectly follow it. At the end of the point, cut the hair into a point and glue it down as before to cover the remaining tape. If needed, use one more strip to cover the remaining exposed tape. The end will likely require a bit more glue than the previous section since you have so many strips ending and beginning in a small section of the curls. For the ends, I do recommend putting glue on top to make sure that you have a very secure end. Make sure to smooth it out to prevent it from drying clumpy. Once the wig was entirely covered with hair, I moved on to the inner supports. There were three separate sections of inner supports that I used for this wig. The first was an extra 12 gauge galvanized wire in the top half of the wig. I measured out enough wire to go about halfway down each of the curls and cut this, marking the middle as well. Once the wire is cut, slide it into the wig in the same spots as the copper wire, making sure to line up the middle of the wire with the middle of the wig. If you are using galvanized wire, it's a bit too strong to bend easily with your hands like the copper wire. I recommend using pliers. Bend the wire up on each side where it exits the wig. Once the wire is bent upwards, start taking the working side of the wire out of the coil. I recommend keeping the side you aren't working on yet in a coil to keep it out of the way. Now you will want to start bending this wire in the desired shape of the finished curl. Each section will be attached to the wire until you reach the end of the new wire. At this point, I realized tape alone was not going to be enough to hold the wire and the curl together. At the top of the curl, the wire is supporting the full weight of that half of the wig. The wig will need to be laid out flat so that the wire can be glued into position. 
Now, you will continue bending the wire into the desired finished shape. Make sure to continuously check each curl with its neighbors to make sure that they are the right size and sitting at the correct angle in regards to each other. I don't recommend gluing a curl until you've adjusted the wire for the next one as well to ensure it doesn't need any changes. Something important to note is that the wire should be pressed firmly against the curl. There should be no gaps between the wire and the tape. The curl should fit snugly around the wire the entire way down. If you're having trouble bending the wire at some point, you can grab the wire through the hair as well. If it was glued properly, the plier will not be able to damage it. Once you have the curl approximately how you would like it, prepare some strips of tape to save time later. There will still be time for minor adjustments to the curl. To attach the wire, I used E6000 in addition to tape. Since tape alone was not strong enough, I applied E6000 around the wire and added the tape on top to hold everything in place while the glue dried. I used the same brushes to apply this glue as I did for the hair fibers before. I found it helpful to also use clips to hold the wire and tape in place as they dried to ensure that it is pressed firmly against the wig. Make sure you don't accidentally put a clip in the glue. Continue adding the glue and tape all the way down the wire. You don't need to cover every section of the wire, but you need to cover enough of it to hold everything in place. I added these inner wires after I added the hair to the wig. The reason for this is the curls are easier to work with when they aren't stiff, which they are once the steel wire is added. Also, for Celeste, the curls overlap a bit in the final hair shape. Having the inner supports in place before gluing the hair on will make it harder to correctly tuck hair underneath. It is up to you if you wish to do it in this order or not. It's a bit hard to see what I'm doing here, mostly because it was hard for me to see what I was doing as well. All I am doing is going down the wire and applying glue and tape to line it up with the already placed copper wire on the inside of each curl. Once you get to the end, make sure to fully cover the tip of the wire to prevent it from poking out of the curl. You can see here what a difference this wire makes in the overall shape of the curl. It's still not perfect, but that's because this was only the first of the three inner supports. You'll then want to continue on to the other side doing the same thing as before.
At the top, make sure the angle matches the other side. For each curl as you work your way down, make sure it is the same size as the other side to prevent lopsided curls. Now that both sides have their first round of supports in, the wig has a much nicer shape to it. 
Go through and make any last minute adjustments to the shape of the individual curls and make sure each side matches. The bottom half of the wig doesn't matter as much since it will be adjustable even after the wig is completed. For the second section of inner supports, another wire will be added. This wire will only be in the top couple of curls. Its purpose is to set the angle for the upper curls and thus the rest of the wig. Having the two steel wires at the top will keep it very sturdy despite the weight of each side dragging it down. This wire will be inserted exactly as the previous one and attached in the same way. The only difference is that it's shorter. You'll notice I also bent the wire to match the shape of my head better so that it is more comfortable to wear. Now with the second section of supports completed, the wig is much better at holding the crazy angles of Celeste's hair up. In the third and final section of the inner supports, the upper curls will be attached together. This is perhaps the strangest part of the wig, and is just something I decided to try due to already having the materials on hand. It turned out that it worked amazingly well. To bind the upper curls together, you'll use a set of four nylon webbing straps. I don't recommend using less than this, as the more you have, the less weight each is supporting. Decide how many curls you want to attach, and measure out a strip for each side of the curl. Note that all the strips will be different lengths, and you'll want to make them long enough to cover the entirety of each curl you're attaching it to. That is, the bottom of the strip should be at the bottom of the last curl, and the top of the strip should be at the top of the top curl. When measuring the strips, be sure to push the curls together how you would like them to sit at the end. For Celeste's wig, that means they'll need to overlap a bit. Also note that you'll need to seal the ends of each of the nylon webbing strips.
Now each strip will be applied on its respective side of the curl, left, right, top, and bottom. Apply glue to the end of the strip and place it at the top of the curl, getting close to the top of the curl but not quite touching the edge. To hold the strip in place while the glue is setting, place a strip of duct tape over each section. I recommend using two strips of duct tape, each holding down one side of the nylon webbing in order to get maximum coverage. I also recommend using duct tape in a color close to your wig in case anyone decides to peer into your drill later. For the first section, you'll notice I attached the top two curls together. This is because the first part is the easiest to glue, so you'll want to take advantage of this and attach two curls to start with. The gluing gets harder from here. From the outside of the wig, you'll get a nice seamless attachment for the curls. If you took the time to curve the outer edges earlier, it'll have a nice indentation between the curls. To glue the next section of each strip, you'll need to apply the glue and add duct tape like before. If the strip is in a location you can pull out between the curls, pull it through and apply glue when it's outside the wig. Then carefully slide it back in without getting glue on the outside of the wig, put it in place and tape it down. For strips that you aren't so lucky to have easy access to, you'll need to pull the strip back towards the top of the wig, add the glue, and fold it back down. Continue applying the strips one curl at a time, working in a spiral, until you reach the last curl that you would like to bind together. With the duct tape in place, it will be sturdy enough to be picked up, so you can hold it up and admire your work.
As you can see, this section of the inner supports is really what gives the wig that iconic Celeste shape. Don't discount the wiring added though, as without that the top curls would not be strong enough to hold everything up at the proper angle. Now go through and repeat everything on the other side. As always, make sure it all matches up with the side you already did. The curls are now all done, yay! Except, not really, now you need to cover the inside of the bottom half of the wig with hair. I lost the footage for this part, but you'll do it the exact same way as you did the outside. Only cover up to where the curls are attached. You won't be able to see what you're doing, and neither could my camera, so I guess it doesn't really matter that I lost the footage. This is definitely the most frustrating part to do. You could just skip it, but after you've put this much time in the wig, you want it to look perfect, and that means hair on the inside as well. Once the curls are complete, it's time to pull the base wig up into the curls. Take the wig out of the hairbands you have it in and start separating it into sections. You'll want to do this one section at a time rather than all at once. When you grab a section of hair, make sure to brush it completely through before gluing it. You will then work it around the curl horizontally to match the hair on the outside of the curl. Start at the top of the curl and work down inside of it. You will want to alternate between gluing on the front and back of the curl since the hair will probably not be long enough to go all the way around the curl. Make sure to apply the hair immediately underneath the section above it, not leaving any gaps where the tape can be seen through.
You will want to start with sections immediately around the curl, then radiate outwards. The sections attached to the skin part and bang should be at last as those will be the ones visible in the completed wig. If you used a thick base wig like I did, you may want to cut some of the lower sections short rather than working them into the curl to reduce bulk. Since these will be covered, you can just do a blunt cut on the hair and glue it down. You will want to take more care on the upper layers, though. All of this gluing may seem just like extra work, and it isn't completely necessary to cover the inside of the top of the curls. You could choose just to put the hair up and leave it there rather than working it into the curls. However, I definitely recommend covering the inside of the curl as well, as you probably will have photos taken at a dumper angle. When you get to the outside layer, that is, the layer that will be visible, it gets a bit trickier. I recommend starting with the hair at the bottom underneath the curl. Pull it up as close as you can to the curl, making sure to use enough glue to hold it in place. I found it helpful to pull up the curl and rest it on my shoulder at this part. 
If everything was made properly, the wig would be sturdy enough to withstand this. Then, work your way around the wig, pulling up sections one at a time. You want to pull everything towards where the curl comes out of the wig, so that it looks like the curl is actually coming out of the wig. The upper layers of the base wig I used were incredibly thick, so I chopped off quite a bit of the hair here as well. I recommend working on both halves of the wig at the same time in order to ensure they match each other. When attaching the last section that would go on the inside of the wig, I tried to cover the upper edge of the curl as well, to make sure no tape would be peeking out. As you can see here, it's very important that the last section on the inside goes forward to match with the direction of the curls. If you're doing a different character, you may need to make the last section go backwards, depending on the direction of the curls.
For the hair sections on the front of the wig, these will be pulled onto the outside of the curl. When covering the curls initially, I didn't worry about covering right up to the edge or having neat work because the base wig would be covering it. Simply pull the hair up to the front of the curl and tuck it into the crease between the wig and the curl. Since this part will be covered by the headdress, you don't need to worry too much about glue showing. When smoothing the ends onto the curl, use the same method from before of only gluing on the underside and smoothing out any glue visible from the outside of the hairs. After pulling back the second section, I realized that the hair didn't want to sit in the crease and clips weren't doing much to help. To hold everything in place, I took a piece of thread and tied the hair tightly back. You can use any type of string to do this. I would recommend you use a smaller size and make the color close to the wig color in case it gets stuck in the glue. With the last sections, I again curved the hair over the top edge of the curl as I did on the inside of the curl. This will help make the top of the curl look smoother and more natural. Once this part has been done, the drill curls are completed. I went over with a generous spray of hairspray to help smooth down any flyaway hairs. You'll probably need to do more cleanup, but other than that, all that's left is styling the rest of the wig. When I style wigs for myself, I always like to cut the bangs while wearing the wig. This will give you a better idea of how long to make them to match your face. It should go without saying, but scissors are sharp, be very careful with them. Since I was doing this on stream and didn't have a mirror to look at, I just quickly cut the hair to the length I wanted, then took it off. Make sure before you cut anything that you have the wig perfectly straight and pulled to where you want to wear it. An easy way to make sure it is on straight is to hold the two ear flap pieces on each side and make them even with each other. Celeste's bangs aren't perfectly straight across, they have a very subtle point in the middle. If you wanted to get a look more like the anime version of Celeste, it's a stronger point. Her bangs are also fairly long. Because of this, I cut the bangs shorter very slowly to make sure they didn't end up too short. The middle especially will need to be fairly long. Once I had the length about where I wanted it, I took the wig off to start cleaning it up. Again, I didn't have a mirror to work with, so it was easier to style it this way. Celeste's bangs are very blunt, but you don't want to make them too blunt or they can look choppy. Use vertical cuts along the bangs to smooth out any cuts that appear to be too choppy. For the side bangs, I wanted them to be shaped into points, so I thinned them down at the bottom. The original bangs on the base wig were too short, so I added in some wefts to make them long enough. 
The original bangs also had to be thinned out a bit to blend them in with the wefts better. I then used some hair gel to help the points hold their shape. Once I had everything about where I liked it on the wig head, I put the wig back on to do some more final touches. I have changed the bangs a bit more off stream since I first completed the wig, so you definitely don't have to have them exactly how you like them right off the bat. Finally, once everything is done, it's cleanup time. This part feels like it takes forever since you are literally cutting off single strands of hair, but if you've already put in all the time to make this wig, a little bit more won't hurt. Cut any hairs that are out of place, use tweezers to pull off any bits of glue that are showing, and just try to give everything a cleaner look. If you've been trying to keep your work neat up until now, there won't be too much to do. I also found I had some spots where the tape was a bit visible, so I used some black paint and Sharpie to try and hide those parts. If there's visible tape on the edges of the curls, just cut it off while being very careful to not accidentally cut the hair. If any hairs still feel a bit loose, use more glue to tack them down. Finally, once the wig is complete, I highly recommend making a head protector to wear with it. I didn't do this originally, and the force of the wires rubbing against my scalp ended up giving me a small scab since I wore the wig for over 10 hours in one weekend. It was also very painful to wear for extended periods without anything to protect your head. I highly recommend only wearing this wig for short periods of time and removing it if you feel any pain. To make the head protector, just take a section of thick foam, longer and wider than the bit of wire that sits on your head, and glue velcro straps to it. You could permanently attach it if you wanted to, but I like to have one that I can replace if I need to. If you used multiple wires like I did, I also recommend wrapping them in electrical tape to keep them together. It also creates a convenient carrying handle. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more of my cosplay work, be sure to come by my Twitch channel when I'm live and follow on social media for updates. If you ever have any questions about cosplay or my projects, Twitch is the absolute best place to ask them as I can answer them immediately. 
If you make any cosplays using this video's reference, please send me photos as I'd love to see them. Again, thank you all for watching and have a great day.